Today you're going to learn how to create standard bars for the application of financial machine learning. So this is pretty cool. We're going to be exploring all the data structures um, that are within this Advances in Financial Machine Learning by Marcos Lopez de Prado, uh, 2018 book, and it's really considered the Bible of machine learning for financial markets. So let's take a look at Marcos de Prado's four essential types of financial data. So what he considers to be the four um, you know, uh, columns of financial data is fundamental data, so assets, liabilities, sale, earnings, um, financial uh, fundamental data, market data, price, yield, implied volatility, volume, dividends, the analytics, which is like credit ratings, earnings expectations, news sentiment, and then alternative data. So Google, Google searches, I've got searchers in there, uh, satellite, CCTV images, and other metadata and things like that. So today we're going to be looking at the two bolded um, information here, price and volume. Now standard bars for financial machine learning, you would have heard of time bars. Today we're gonna to look at how to create some of the other ones in Python as well. Tick bars, volume bars, and dollar bars. And what we're trying to do is look at how to aggregate uh, tick or trade information um, actually as information comes in. So as uh, a number of trades come in, as the volume, a certain volume gets traded and as a certain, a certain market value is traded. So let's consider time bars first and then we're going to look at why um, you might go and use some other uh, aggregations. So let's first import our dependencies as always. So we're going to import pandas as pd. We're going to import numpy as np. We're going to import uh, matplotlib uh, plot as plt, and we're going to import date time as dt. Cool. So we actually need trade information now. This is the actual trade tick information and usually you'd have to pay for this kind of stuff. So I would really like to get a subscription to the one of the brokerage firms that offers trade level information. So then I can go ahead, process that data on this, uh, on this YouTube channel and then you guys uh, on the channel can benefit from that. So I'm not there at the moment. I haven't been able to pay for a service like that, but my broker, Comsec, does have give me access to one day's worth of trading information for a particular equity. So in this case, I'm looking at CBA and we're just gonna look at uh, last Friday's information. So we're going to, I have that in the CSV file that I've pulled down from my brokerage website. All we need to do is we'll call this trades and pandas um, read underscore CSV. And then we're just going to give it the trade CSV file. Now let's take a look at this pandas data frame. We have time, price, volume, value, market, and condition. Now we're interested in these columns here. Um, and right now we have time on this axis here. Let's get that first into a date time and then we're going to make that the index. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to call that trades.time equal to, and we're gonna say pd to date time and we're going to give it the trades.time. That's just indexing the column and making it the pandas data frame to date time. Now let's make it and actually set it as the index and what we need to do there is just set underscore index. We're gonna give it the time column and we're gonna say in place equals true. What the in place equals true does is it just says get rid of this column once I've made it the index, don't double up. So let's run that. Now we're looking here. Now what we're gonna do, let's just make a plot of this very easy in Jupyter Notebook. So you can just go dot plot. And you can see that we have the volume and value here in green. So yeah, the value is very easy to see. Price times volume, not that hard to understand. But here you can see that we actually have from the time periods from 7 a.m all the way to uh, 1700, so 5 p.m. And what you'll know is that the market here in Australia, the open hours are actually between 10 a.m. and uh, 1600, 4 p.m. So we've got the pre-market trades here and we've got the aftermarket, post-market trades and auctions here. So 
This information is a little bit hard to sift through because sometimes within one uh, tick, one trade information, there's actually many trades that have gone through in the auction. And this, this kind of information can be hard to um, identify and it's really going to be an outlier uh, for creating, uh, well, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, bars, standard bars that we're gonna be talking about today. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mask and only consider the information during market um, open hours. So what we're gonna do is create a mask. So let's go mask equals, and we'll take that uh, trades data frame. We're gonna take the index and we're gonna slice it. We're gonna say that it's gonna be greater than a particular time and that date time, DT dot date time, and we're gonna give it the year, the hours, the days. So what are we here? We're uh, the 10th of the 6th. So 2021, the month is the 10th, 6th is the day. The hours that I want from is 10 a.m. and then zero minutes, zero seconds. So I'll add another condition now, and what we wanna say is that it's going to be less than or equal to the market close, which is 1600. So I've got this thing that is mask now, and what I'm gonna say is trades MH, which is just trades market hours, and we're gonna use the function iLock to apply that mask. Whoop. So trades uh, market hours, and that's just gonna be trades.iLock. So once we've got that, we can take a look at our data frame. And you can see now that the uh, time index there is between our market hours. So I'm just doing this for the stock CBA, so Commonwealth um, Bank of Australia. So let's start moving into the time bars. How can we actually aggregate on a certain period? So a time-based period, let's say every five minutes. <clears throat> well, this is pretty easy, um, but we're gonna find out why there's some statistical benefits not to do this. So we'll call this time bars. And we're gonna say trades market hours dot group by. And we're gonna use this thing called group grouper and this takes frequency. So the frequency that we're going to group, aggregate this data on is five minutes. Now, what do we wanna aggregate on? Well, we want to aggregate on two different columns. We want it on the price dollars, I'm pretty sure was the column. And um, what we actually wanna call is this function called open, high, low, close. Now, Pandas data frame already has an inbuilt function that's going to return the open, high, low, close over this aggregated data. Um, so that's pretty handy for us. The other bit of information we want is volume and we wanna take the sum of that. So this is just another function that's inherent to um, Pandas data frame over this aggregation. So we'll be taking those sums. Now, the other thing that we're going to want now <coughs> is to print that out. So let's say trade bars. Sorry, let's call this time bars. That makes a lot more sense. So now that we've got this time bar, five minutely um, aggregation, you can see now that it's kind of dual indexed. Um, so let's actually just get Let's change this um, so we only get the close price, open, high, low, close price information. So we'll call this time bars price and this will be time bars and we're gonna take lock. We're gonna take all of the rows and we're going to only give it that column there. So time bars price and that should just give us the open, high, low, close information. Excellent. So now to look at the statistical properties of this distribution, we're going to actually calculate the log returns and looking at, look at it in terms of a histogram. Um, we're not gonna do any statistical tests saying that it is or isn't normally distributed, but it'll be fairly evident from the graph. And we have done that in a previous uh, series on this channel. So if you're interested in looking whether the data log normally is, is uh, normally distributed, well, you can look back at our channel and find that video. So here are the log returns. Now remember the log returns are taken with a NumPy function log, and we're just gonna take the difference between the trade close price, which is time bars 
um, underscore price dot close divided by the same thing but shifted so time bars underscore price dot close dot shift and we just shift it by one now if you press enter on there you're going to find out that there's one um, one piece of information and that'll be the start time period where we don't have this difference so that's just a degrees of freedom thing so we can get rid of that by dropping the na so this will remove the first time period <coughs> So yeah, you can hit go on that and, and whatever, but let's actually take a look and create this histogram of those log returns. So for that, we'll just go plt.hist. We'll take the log returns and then we're going to define the bins, the bin length. Now for this, I want to use numpy arrange. So all I need to specify here is um, I'm going to create an array from the start finish and then I'm going to define the step size. Now the step size I'm just going to call here, I don't know, bin len or, or something like that, uh, bin len. Let's just give that an arbitrary value of 0 0.01. Uh, we're going to have very small log returns here between uh, time steps so you'll see why in a second. Let's take the min of log return. Now we're going to take the max of log return plus this bin length and then we're going to take time uh, the actual steps um, of bin length cool and we'll just go plt.show so as you can see here this uh, distribution doesn't look normally distributed again could do a you know um, Shapiro Wilk test to define whether this is normally distributed or not um, yeah, or KS test or, or whatever you want to do to, to determine whether these returns are normally distributed, they don't look normally distributed to me. So you can go and do that as an exercise for yourself. So what are the issues about using uh, time series based information? Well, essentially what we're doing is we're oversampling information during low activity periods uh, where there's low volume and undersampling information during high period, uh, yeah, high activity periods. So this can lead to a number of problems, but often lead to the poor statistical uh, properties that we don't really like. So serial correlation, which is the correlation of um, the particular data uh, with regards to itself, with a lagged version of itself. So any function, um, a delayed copy of itself, we've got some kind of correlation. And usually that is not a good thing when we're trying to do all these uh, statistical tests, regression, ordinary least squares uh, that we have in our toolbox to be able to analyze this financial data. Heteroscedasticity, that's often a hard one to pronounce, I'm glad I've done it there. Uh, so this is the variance, and this is the variance changing over time. So the error squared term, whatever data you're working with, financial data, we're calling this variance. Um, essentially what this means is that we've got a changing variance in our data over time, and this is a problem because, let's say, techniques like ordinary least squares for regression assumes that the residuals are drawn from a population that has a constant variance from an IID process or whatever. Um, so this can lead to some headaches um, and also non-normality of returns, which of course we are very familiar with in the financial industry. So let's talk about ways that, well, there have been ways to get around, uh, especially the heteroscedasticity. So the Garch models were developed to come up with ways around this um, when you're using uh, these time bars. However, by sampling price and volume information as a subordinated process of trading activity, so potentially market traded value or uh, number of trades or the uh, volume that has been traded, we can actually avoid this problem altogether. So we're going to look at how to do that now. So for this, what I need to do is uh, create a helper function. Now this helper function is just going to be returning um, a number of integer uh, bars. So let's call this function bar and we have x, y. So all we need to return is we're going to return an integer and we're going to return um, x divided by y <coughs> times by y. Now this will become very evident why we're doing this. All we need to define is that 
um, for a given data set, we need to define an integer number of bars over that data set. So we've created this helper function here. Tick bars, now tick bars are the sample variables, open, high, low, close, volume, and we're going to sample this over a predefined number of transactions. Now these transactions are going to be say <coughs> 10, so let's say transactions equals 10 or 25 transactions, so 25 trades, and we're going to sample the open, high, low, close and volumes um, of the trades market, hour, uh, market hours data frame over this time. So just like before, we're going to use the group by function. So tick bars equals trades market hours group by. And now we're going to group by. We're going to use this function bars. We're going to group over bars and we're going to give that the numpy arrange. So we're gonna give this an array, which is of length, length, trades, market hours. So we also need to define in this function, how many times, and that is going to be based on the number of transactions. So for every 25 transactions, please divide this data up into however many bars, uh, integer bars, we're going to get back with the length of trades in this data frame. Bit of a handful, but once you actually code this up yourself, you will understand. So now we've grouped by, we need to aggregate on something. <coughs> so we use that dot ag function again, and you guessed it, all we need to do is copy that information that we had up here uh, on price OHLC and volume sum. So let's just copy that information and place it here. So take the price, take the volume, and take the open, high, low, close, calculate the sum of the volume. So once we've done that, we can return tick bars. We're gonna do exactly the same thing as we did before. And we're just gonna get the price information back. So we're gonna say tick bars, and we're gonna say lock, over all the rows, give me the price information. <coughs> Tick bars price. So that should just give me the open high, low, close. What have I done there? I've given it the wrong key. Tick bars, tick bars, tick bars price. Now I've put a space there. Sorry about that. So price dollars, excellent. So now all we have to do for those tick bars is actually take the uh, log returns code that we've done up here and we'll just place tick bars instead of time bars. So tick bars, enter. And we'll need it a little bit more granular than that. So let's go one, um, one over 10,000. And you can see there that we end up with this um, a, a distribution that looks more normal than the actual time bars series. So here we, I'm not gonna prove that. You can use statistical tests, um, KS test or uh, shapiro wilk test to be able to judge that that's normally distributed yourself. So moving on to the volume bars. Volume bars are sampled every time a predefined amount of the security is actually exchanged in the marketplace. So that's a, just a given volume. So we'll call a variable traded volume and we're gonna call this like 5,000 units. Could be whatever we want. Now we're going to say that the volume bars is equal to the trades mh dot group by now we're going to group over the bar. Now we're going to take numpy cum sum and we're gonna use the trades market hours and we're going to accumulate over volume. Now to get the number of bars, the appropriate number of bars, we're gonna divide through by the traded volume that we're looking at. What properties do we wanna get back? Well, we wanna get the aggregation of the price space dollars and we wanna use that function OHLC to get the open, high, low, close, and we want the volume, which is just gonna be calculated as the sum. 
But that's almost trivial because we, we know what the traded volume is going to be. We're defining that 5,000. So let's get the price information, which is just going to be lock over the rows, which is the price. And we just want to show that data frame to make sure that we've done it correctly. So now you can see that we have a traded volume, 5,000, each 5,000, we have these different properties. So let's uh, check the log returns now of the volume bars and see what that distribution looks like. So just copy in the code from above, change to volume bars, and let's look at the distribution. And again, you can see that this is somewhat normally distributed. So we're starting to see that using different ways of getting our standard bars, we can get uh, a distribution that is based on the information arriving or traded value, um, which actually has better statistical properties, potentially better statistical properties than just using time bars. So let's move on to dollar bars. Dollar bars are formed by sampling and observation every time a predefined value in the market is exchanged. So let's call this market value. And let's say that we're interested in uh, getting the observations every time $100,000 is transacted in the market for CBA. So now that we've got that, uh, we're gonna go through the accumulation process again. We're gonna call this the dollar bars. We're going to make sure that that's equal to trades mh dot group by. You'll be very used to this uh, by the end of it. So group by, what do we want to group by? We want to group the bars. We want to group the bars that have the trades um, with what columns? Well, if you look in this, uh, this data frame again, we have this value, which is just the volume uh, multiplied by the price, which is the market value that we're interested in. So we're just going to index that column name right there, accumulate on that, and then we're going to create our bars. Oh, sorry, I've forgotten the NumPy cum sum. So we're going to take the cumulative sum of that value, and we're going to create those bars at dis discretized values of the market sum. So every time this market value is uh, passed, um, then we're going to create a new bar. So hopefully that makes sense. We're gonna take the aggregation again of the statistical properties price. We want the open, high, low, close, which again is an inbuilt function in Pandas data frame. So thank you for that. Got the volume and we're gonna take the sum. Now that we got that, we have dollar bars. We want the price information only. So we take dollar bars, we use the lock function we want all the rows of the column price dollars. Take the dollar bars, make sure that returns. We can see that every time $100,000 uh, trades now, we want the open, high, low, close information. So that's really interesting there. Now you could check the lengths of these data frames and kind of compare, um, you know, the the size, depending on the market value that is you assign or the volume that you assign to these uh, bar formations and you can kind of get, uh, well, you can compare this over time and kind of look, oh, how many, how many uh, bars am I creating per day? Does this change with the same value? Um, and that is one of the exercises that's in the book at the end of this chapter. So if you're gonna do that, highly recommend getting the book. So now that we've got that, all we need to do is take the log returns. Now the log returns we're going to take is now of the, we're going to take the dollar bars. So dollar bars, price. And again, you can see that this distribution is somewhat normally distributed just by taking a glance at it. So again, run the test that you want, but essentially you've just learned a couple of ways to look at standard bars, which actually aggregate um, the open high, cl uh, low close information, the price information and the volume information based on uh, different components in the market, different information that's driving that aggregation of prices. Why do we wanna do this? Well, by actually just using the time-based bars, we are oversampling and undersampling uh, potentially different areas uh, of, of price information. And what we wanna do is kind of average that out so we can get some better statistical properties in the times that we are aggregating the information, get more useful, uh, potentially normal distributions 
um, from this process. So thank you very much for listening. In the next one, we're actually going to learn some more advanced methods that are information driven uh, bar construction. And that is again in the same chapter. So stay tuned for next time. Until then, see you later.